Hello everyone and welcome to episode 124 of the TW 2020 New Japan Pro Wrestling Series here on the channel is it is the Wrestling Yotaku Tour. Which is of course our two major nights on the uh, final two shows and then we'll have uh, with the tour show which usually we have uh, around five I want to say maybe it's six actually I'm thinking about it. Um, I always forget how many tour show days we have. Oh, didn't mean to click on that. It is six. All right. So yeah, but the six tour shows, but of course the one show, which I believe is night five, is the New Japan Warfare matchup, a, a thing that we uh, pretty much coined for this tour. As far as it's kind of like a little special thing we do with it, and uh, we'll talk about that very very shortly. As far as um, with what uh, yeah, as far as who are the two groups involved in that, and also as far as the final shows, what they're gonna look like. As uh, night one, we made a video with a New Japan Strong Overweight. Title matchup is Shinsuke Nakamura takes on John Moxley. So Moxley's in a unique spot because, of course, he beat Tamora, and if Hayao Tamora uh, gets, a, you know, of course, he just had a New Japan Cup victory. So one would imagine somebody like John Moxley could potentially have a viable shot of being like a top contender for the heavyweight title or even the Intercontinental title. Uh, so we'll see how that plays out as far as if he beats. Shinsuke Nakamura there in the main event. Come main event. IWGP Tag Team Battle Matchup as Makabe and Gretchen look to make their first defense a successful one as they take on the Sombra and Shingo. So these two teams, they battled out during the Tag League last year. Sombra and Shingo beat them, so it felt like that was a good kind of catalyst to have Makabe and Gresham have their first defense events against a team that has beaten them in the past. Junior Heavyweight Tag, uh, I'll, I'll say Junior Heavyweight Tag Team, but not just regular Junior Heavyweight title matchup as uh, Tante Martin versus Chaz Gable. This is a fun match. Yeah, it's two completely different styles. You got a high flyer in Tante Martin against, obviously, Olympic caliber wrestler like Chaz Gable. Fun match there uh, as far as Junior Heavyweight title reign that Chaz Gable has had so far. Uh, just in a couple of months here has been uh, pretty good, and it's... Uh, He's honestly been a, a list as far as one of the best junior heavyweight champions we've had so far. Just from some of the matches he's had, he, he's been really, really good. Uh, we'll see how he does in that matchup. And then the never open six-man tag team title matchup as the Death Triangle of Pac, Pentagon Jr., Ray Fenix taking on the new wave of strong style, of course, of Yuto Nakashima, uh, Atsuki Aoyagi, and then uh, Ryo A. Oiwa. That's a tough matchup for the new wave of strong style. We'll see how they do against Death Triangle. Uh, then the uh, undercard, as far as a little build up to night two, with uh, Juice Robinson and Hux Coughlin taking on Claudio Castagnoli and Shatoru Shino. So, of course, you see in the co main event of night two, U.S. title matchup Claudio Castagnoli versus Juice Robinson. And, uh, of course, you know, as far as a little build up to that, and we'll be seeing that throughout the tour. Then Diamond K versus the Dragon's Den. Again, another matchup that we'll be seeing on the New Japan Strong Open Way Tag Team title matchup there on night two. Kenta Katsuki Nakajima will be beating. Or we'll be beating Jesus. Uh, we'll be facing Dragons. Then who knows if they're gonna beat him or not? <laughs> uh, that was wild. Uh, but yeah, that's as far as Diamond K and Dragons. Then that will be a, I believe it's a, uh, I believe that's a six man match because I believe on the tour we're gonna have an eight man match with kind of Diamond K of Kenta Nakajima, Kota Yamada, Kato Crusher against uh, Dragons. Then which would be O'Reilly, Tamora, uh, Roger Strong, Daniel Garcia. So we'll see. See how that plays out in the trios matchup, and then uh, the uh, next matchup: Shota Yumino and Eddie Kingston versus Yuye Yui Mora and Rin Narita. So yeah, we're having a main event of um, Kingdom of Strong Style versus Task Force Death. Felt like we could have an undercard matchup there, and that's why that's on the card. And then uh, the opener: the fifth trial series matchup for Suneo Takedome. He's taking on Kodo Bushi to kick off the night, and uh, then for night two, of course. We saw Sonata attack Romu after his post-show press conference at Sakura Genesis, which will lead to this heavyweight title matchup between the two, as, uh, of course, that's going to be a very, very fun matchup. The two former LIJ stablemates, and uh, hard to believe now they're leading their own groups uh, for Sonata and Romu. God, they've had a Wrestle Kingdom match now in the save. Uh, this for the Intercontinental title. That was, I want to say, 2022? So that would have been... I believe that would have been Wrestle Kingdom 20. Believe. Uh, if not, it would have been... Actually, let's just take a look. Because I want to say it was... Uh, oh, it was 16. Yeah, Wrestle Kingdom... So we got the right year. We got the wrong... Uh, 
wrong one. Because, yeah, 20 was obviously pretty soon. Yeah, it was 2026 last year. Jeez. Uh, but, yeah, uh, that's far. So, that's a uh, co-main event there. Oh, not the co-main event. The main event, rather. <laughs> it's uh, Sonata and Rome, which should be a very fun main event. That's going to be a banger. Of course, we already talked about the co-main and the New Japan Strong Open Weight Tag Team title matchup. And then, the next title matchup, Junior Boy Tag Team title matchup, is a new team merging here. In New Japan, the Divine Angels, and that will be Angel Garza and Archangel Deveno. Two luchadors there, uh, two unmasked luchadors. That's kind of fun. And as far as that, kind of more of a uh, bit of a Rudo team with a little bit of flair, a little bit of uh, kind of a, a little bit of um, kind of your traditional style of like a Rudo where um the kind of the the young cocky Rudo team with uh, Garza and um and Archangel the Veno. A couple of high flyers in there as well. Garza a lot more like well rounded, a lot more actual more of a uh, actual competitor whereas the you know, Archangel the Veno more of a spot monkey if you will. But uh, he uh he and uh, I think Garza are gonna be a fun little team. We'll see how they do against the Velocities of course who have been on a tear of a uh, Junior Four Way Tag Team Battle Ray in almost a year now. Uh, they have been incredible. We'll see how they do in that matchup. And then uh, for the rest of the card, Jay White and Miro taking on Walter and Lee Moriarty. So, Walter, Moriarty, of course, Walter, um, former tag team champion now, kind of looking to pigeon his way into another type of role. Obviously, you have, uh, after this tour, you'll have uh, the best of juniors, so you'll have that time off, and then you'll have Dominion, and then before you know it, in the G1. So, as far as maybe these four men looking for some momentum building, uh, and also, of course, Jay White and Miro, they've had, um, you know, Miro un inadvertently cost Jay White his matchup, and then we've um, kind of been playing it up on Strong, where um, we've had uh, Jay White cost Miro a matchup inadvertently, uh, as far as we've seen, we're going to be kind of seeing maybe a pattern. Is this more... Is there infighting between the the two men? Is it uh, maybe frustration? It's been a while since we've seen some gold for House of Torture, so maybe that's it. Maybe it's just you know accidental things happening, and you know just not really their time. That's not been uh, luck hasn't been on their side type of thing. I'll have to wait and see. Blast off versus House of Black though in a trios matchup, so that should be fun to see. Uh, that will be of course Abushi and uh, the Astronauts. Taking on House of Black, Tyler Black, and then, I uh, believe, Robbie Eagles and Shane Strickland. I believe that is that trio team. The Suzuki Goon versus Peace Love of War. So a little fall, or not a fallout, rather, excuse me, a little build up to the Cobain. With, uh, you know, as far as having a Suzuki Goon Peace Love of War matchup, just felt like we needed that on the undercard. That's going to be a trios match, as uh, that's going to be Suzuki Goon of Shatoru Shino, Takanori Ito. I want to say yay hi. Want to say taking on peace, love, and war of uh, Alex Coughlin, Clark Connors, and uh, Barbara Cavanero. So that's gonna be a fun trios match. Then the opening contest, another trial series matchup for Sune of Takedo. Almost at almost at the end already of his trial series, as uh, the sixth match is against Zack Saber Jr. So now he's taking on former heavyweight champions. He is really taking a step up in competition. We'll see how he does against somebody like Zack. And uh, yeah, that will be the rundown as far as that uh, is the matches that is the card as uh, we will go into the first night now of the tour everything obviously pre-booked all ready to go we just gotta add everything so we got a couple of backstage incidents first one jonathan peck was brought for wrestler's court accused of making a mess backstage not cleaning it up annoying everyone else the judge shinsuke nakamura found him guilty and sent him cleaned up and then by drinks up to the show the guy that passing on psychology tips to the great okan and then goji and passing on mic phone work to hey Otto tomorrow so our main event for this night, uh, we got a couple of matches that could probably be the main. I do like that Tyler Black, Dante Martin, Claudio Castagnoli, Chaz Gable matchup. As it's building up to the Junior Boy title matchup. But this is also, we're seeing Juice attack Claudio here. So it turns basically into a one. And it ends up being Dante Martin pinning the Junior Boy champion because of that. So, fun little match there. Uh, then we'll have the co-main, which is kind of weird to have this be the co-main. But I just feel like this is not going to be a, a, as good of a matchup as we're going to see in the main. Now, so uh, Nakamura and Kushida against John Moxley and Shota Imanos. I didn't know who I wanted to win this match. That's why I left it blank. Um, you know, it's tough. You know, both guys could uh, obviously. I think Nakamura and Kushida could usually win a little bit more, but Shota Imanos could usually win. 
beating somebody like Kushida, so I think that's what we're gonna do. Have him beat Kushida. Alrighty. Uh, so then, we're gonna go with, um, let's see what this Task Force Death Kingdom of Strong Style matchup is. So it's the, uh, Death Triangle, taking on Yui Mora, Shelly, and Kaji D'Amato. Obviously, Death uh, Triangle will be getting the win there, so I see why I was kind of resistant in picking a winner here, because they're losing in this match. Yeah, we sh- uh, well, I think a lot of people maybe would expect 50-50 booking here, and we're gonna swerve them a bit. Uh, then we'll have the Defiant Angels. Taking on Blast Off Team of Jason Lee and Shun Skywalker, Steel Strail matchup as Archangel the Venno. Or we're going to spell it like this. Uh, we've had him on a couple of Fantastic Mania shows in the past. I'm trying to remember how many we had him work. I'll just, uh, never mind. I thought we did. We never uh, used him. So yeah, we, he's already had a uh, him and um, Garza. We had to make sure that they you know, didn't have any bad chemistry or anything. So they had a strong match uh, last week as. Um, yeah, just kind of wanted to make sure they, they were ready to go. So they're going to beat Jason Lee and Shun Skywalker. So really with this, you know, they, the idea is they've been a team in, in CMLL. They've been building up their momentum, their wins, and now they're coming here to New Japan to see if maybe potentially they can rise the rankings as well. So that's getting a win there. And uh, then we're going to have Yoda Suji and SB Kento. Uh, Los Angeles Brown Highway Day Up. I'm taking on the new wave of strong style, Takeshi Masada and Yu Izuka, which um, Seda will be beating SP Kento. So nice win there, which SP is a little unhappy about that. He is furious. I'm sure he'll be fine. And then United Rage will be taking on Oleg and Oscar, which obviously United Rage will be beating the Young Lions there. So uh, as far as our card, yeah, I mean, you always kind of start off the torn tube, but I'm not really sure why. I just kind of like it. I just feel like we have. Um, Nice set of places to run. You know, we got, um... I thought there was a 5,000 seater. Maybe not. Never mind. That's, um... Yeah, there's 5,000 seater here. 4,000 seater. Yeah, we'll run here, actually. Let's change it up a little bit. Alrighty. So, day one. Let's run it. United Rage. Beating Oleg and Oscar, which Okan did well here. Lariat from, uh, the Great Okan. Getting the win. 941. That was a 61. 66. For SB Kendo and Yotosuji, yeah. Uh, kind of a, a good reason why to be upset here with um, um, Masada here for SB Kendo. He was the best guy of the match. Probably should have got the win. We're trying to build up the new wave here of strong style. And that's a big win. Uh, both uh, Yotosuji and you were off their games. So tough break there. But overall, decent little matchup. 71 here from Jason Lee and Shun Skywalker against uh, the Divine Angels. As the Divine Angels will win. Lock under the Venno with the high speed Mystica in 10.09. Which, uh, they have great chemistry. You know, Jason Lee and uh, Shun Skywalker. Excellent chemistry, to be exact. And they only had one point uh, difference. Actually, a couple point difference. Then, like, three point difference. But still, kind of crazy. Um, and that just shows you there are still a ways to go for Arcandre the Venno and uh, Angel Garza. But it's a good starting point. And it's a big win, too. So that's, that's another win for him. And then the uh, Trios matchup. It's an 80. Thanks to uh, Death Triangle, as they get the win with Pac pinning uh, Kaiser Damato off the Corkscrew Shooting Star Press, which Damato and uh, surprisingly, Yui Moore is the worst guy out of the matchup, and not Kaiser Damato. Shout out Kaiser Damato, just getting a paycheck still. In the year 2027, 82 from uh, Moxie and Shota Yumano against uh, Nakamura and Kushida. Good match. Uh, did a lot better than I anticipated, actually. Did not expect they'd even reach the 80s, let alone an 82. Oh, uh, you know, right team wins here, I think. You know, with uh, Moxley with a 79, 66 from Yumino. At least he outperformed uh, Kushida, but uh, Nakamura, of course, you know, ways away from Moxley. And then our main event, oh, it's at 82 as well. So Tyler Black, Dante Martin, losing here, or, or uh, losing, winning, rather, excuse me, after Juice attacks Claudio and, you know, they brawl through the uh, through the crowd here. It's kind of Claud Claudio's like on the apron. Juice, you pulls him down, whips him over the barricade, and they go into the crowd type of thing. So that, that'd be, that's a fun little, and the scenes, you know, fighting throughout the crowd, and a bit of a pull apart, potentially, and to get them off each other, to end out the first night of the tour. A bit of a crazy one. Bit of a crazy one. So yeah, that is, night one. Oh yeah, I forgot to talk about uh, the New Japan Warfare matchup for night five. It will be between Task Force Death and the Kingdom of Strong style, so wanted to make sure I talked about that. As well, so uh, as far as that's day one, it's on to day two. We go. Alrighty, day two. As uh, for this day, it's uh, more, you know, as far as Hiromu and uh, Ryu Lee against Nada and Tai Chi. That's 
probably the main, even though Tai Chi's not a great performer at this point in 2027. Just, you know, obviously with a main event uh, program on night two, just feel like they should be a little bit higher on the card. It's also Order of Destruction, a United Rage matchup on this card as well. Got a trios match with LIJ and uh, United Empire. As far as the backstage incident, it's uh, Nakamura passing on microphone work to Nuri Takagawa. So we'll be... Uh, also, we have uh, Dragon's Den versus uh, Nakajima and Kato Crusher as well. So that, that's going to be interesting. Uh, new wave of strong style taking on Suzuki Goon. With GI and Hook there. Yeah, as far as uh, Sonata and Taichi against uh, Ryu Lee and Hiromu Takashi. Of course, uh, the Hiromu Ryu Lee team will be getting the win. As they'll be beating Taichi. Yeah, Tai Chi. Not looking too hot. <laughs> Not looking too hot in the year 2027. So the go uh, main here, the trios matchup, as uh, we'll be seeing, of course, for the IWGP Tag Team titles, uh, between uh, the, the matchup between uh, Sombra and Shingo against Gresham and Makabe. A little trios match here uh, with uh, Bushi getting the win over Drew Gulak. So what a win for Los and Gobra Napoli Ah, uh, yeah, then we'll probably do the... Um, Oh, this is a technical masterclass match. I figured that might be the case. So, O'Reilly's going to beat Katsuka Nakajima. So, what a win there for uh, O'Reilly to beat uh, Nakajima there. That's going to be a really good match, though. Uh, so, that will probably mean this is the seal of the show match, but it is. As the Order of Structure will be beating United Rage. As Hobbs will be beating Kitamura. So, the opener will probably be this. As uh, Donna Del Mundo of Athena and Saleta taking on... Uh, the young lioness of Kimi Nishimura and Midori Nomura. So we actually, um, there was like a free pack in this pack that had uh, women's pictures in it. And we had, yeah, so I was lucky enough to not have to make pictures for this. That was nice. Then Hook and Yei Hai. And uh, against uh, Iwasaki in Ryoto Machizuki. So, oh, it was going to be fr uh, <laughs> Hook and Yei Hai. I changed it to Flyer and Dragon Bane. Which I, I like that a little bit more. Uh, the C, and plus we don't really use Flyer and Dragon Bane a whole lot, which we probably should. Uh, they've been pretty solid, pretty much the whole time we've used them. We've been using them for a hot minute, too. And just, again, when you're not in a stable, you're kind of the odd man out with how I book things as far as on the tour show, so it, it's kind of hard for you to find a place. But I think it's going to be a pretty good show. Um, as far as will it be better than Night 1, I'm not sure. It's going to be tough. It's going to be close, I'll, uh, I'll say that. So I get 5,000 people. They're crazy. Um, the Ishikawa Sports Center. Oh, that's 5,000. I don't know why I missed that the first time. So yeah, it'll be a sellout here for day two. It's 51 for the opener. Boy, is uh, Nishimura a uh, 17. Not great. And uh, Midori Nomura, though, at least she was off her game for that, that 27. Yeah, that's terrible. Uh, but Athena with the O-Face in 1026. That's kind of crazy. As uh, Saleta and Athena, obviously much better team. Yeah, Zaleta actually stood up with a uh, and with a good performance. It's kind of interesting. Only that rating gets a you know, gr good performance shout out. As Flyer Dragon Bay losing to Toa Iwasaki and Ryoto Machizuki, which listen, I know it kind of looks wild having uh, those guys as far as winning and the, those ratings. But you gotta understand too; these guys have just got brought up on the main. Kind of, you know, this New Japan roster. Because we've had them in, in CMLL for a little bit. And uh, Ryota Machizuki, we had him in GCW for a little bit. Those guys really haven't had, like, the exposure that some of these other talents have. So for them to have a 57 or 53 this early on in their run is not bad at all. That's a good starting point. It's not a great starting point, but it's a good one. And uh, as far especially with those guys, uh, both of them are unimportant, I believe. Iwasaki might be recognizable. Uh, Machizuki is unrecognizable, though. So, a 53 unrecognizable talent rating is not, not bad. Not bad at all. So, uh, Iwasaki, though, gets the elbow lariat. Uh, it's kind of wild. Uh, pin over Dragon Bane 1008. 74 for Kyle O'Reilly and Roderick Strong against Katsuka Nakajima Kato Crusher. It's so O'Reilly with the ankle lock over Nakajima. Which O'Reilly and Roderick Strong with a better team. So, what a win there. That's a good match, though. Match. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Kyle O'Reilly and Katsuka Nakajima, that's a fun match. Not sure about in the year 2027, but if that was 10 years ago uh, at that time, or even, uh, t well, O'Reilly would be super young in 2007, probably not 20 years ago. Nakajima would be awesome, though, but uh, well, it'd probably be Nakajima and Roger Strong in the 2007 match. But um, yeah, it's a fun match, though. 78 
for uh, United Rage and Order of Destruction. God, I mean, th these two heavyweight tag teams, God, they've been here pretty much since the beginning. Uh, of course, you have know, excellent chemistry for Okan and Kitamon, which doesn't matter, against the Order of Destruction as they get the win. Will Hobbs with the Doomsday Plunge there. 79 and 78 for Hobbs and Tankman. And 77 for the trios matchup here. I'm surprised. Thought that would be uh, much better than the previous matchup as Makabe, Gresham, and Drew Gulak losing to Sombra, Shingo, and Bushi, which Shingo, the worst guy of the match, is kind of crazy, but that's where we're at. Bushi uh, getting the submission victory, though, was kind of crazy, too, over <laughs> Drew Gulak. Probably would have had him win with a MX, but that's all right. Gresham almost got injured, too. Thank God. That did not happen at 85 for our main event. Insane. Tai Chi getting fucking carried here as a run with the triangle choke over Tai Chi. Great match, though. Shockingly. Uh, that mainly because of Ryu Lee or and sent out, of course. Good stuff. Good good stuff. Actually, a good show. I did about the same. Uh, just that crazy you know, main event for that rating. Wild. Wild stuff. Is on to day three. Oh, we go. Alrighty. As, uh, for day three, again, backstage instance, as uh, Taromu, and uh, as far as Ichiharu Machizuki, as he's passing on psychology tips to him. So, uh, as far as for this night here, for this main event, you know, we got a Dragon's Den Diamond K. This is the um, eight man tag. Much I like it as a potential main event, mainly because of um, Diamond K's team. I mean, that's a hell of a team. And they're going to get the win too with Kato Crusher beating Daniel Garcia. Uh, we're also going to have Hiromu and uh, Jiro Kirishio against Sanada and Taichi. This is the technical master class matchup, which is not really a great technical master class matchup because really, like, you know, Kirishio's not great technically. Taichi's all right, but obviously it's kind of more of Sanada and. Uh, Hiromu doing the heavy lifting. Uh, Kirishi is going to beat Tai Chi as well. So, another loss for Tai Chi. Not looking great for the Designs of Perfection. Uh, Peace, Love, and War versus Suzuki Goon. So, yeah, this is um, Juice Coughlin and Barbara Cabanero against Claudio Shitoshino and Takano Ito, which will be a draw. It's going to be a double count out there. Bit of a, uh, you know, as far as what Juice getting in there and uh, really mixing up with guys with um, really just being a pest in there. And, you know, using brawling, using weapons, cheating tactics, whatever you can to get a win type of thing, and uh, it, it really gets under these people's skins, so and that's why you see a lot of non-finishes with this match, as Alexander and Jarvis will be beating the uh, House of Torture team of Brody King and uh, Drew Parker, which is kind of crazy, because that's a good team, you know, Brody King and Drew Parker, they have chemistry and whatnot, but uh, giving it to Alexander and Jarvis mainly, because it's a heavyweight, heavyweight team there in Alexander and Jarvis, Bakadokomoto and uh, Kimetsu Kasai against the astronauts of Fuminori Abe and Takuya and Namor. So this is the Young Lion matchup, obviously. Then United Empire and House Torture, which is another trios matchup. Probably a lot of people wouldn't have expected uh, Su uh, Toru Sujiura to be involved in this matchup. But again, you know, since Brody King's being used, he's kind of the only guy left for House of Torture to use. And they're going to lose as well. So another loss for House of Torture. Crazy. Clean sweep from uh, United Empire here as Lee Moriarty's going to beat Sujiura. A tough, tough break there, and uh, that will be probably the kill main. We're gonna swap that. So yeah, uh, you know, really this undercard is having to put a lot of effort in, as far as um, a lot of the heavy lifting. Unfortunately, it's kind of split in half here, yeah, really, with this card. But I think, uh, as far as compared to some of the other shows, this one might be a bit of a step down. But it's also giving guys a bit of an opportunity as well. But yeah, we'll be running the. Takamatsu City General Gymnasium, which will be a sellout. Oh, not not a sellout, excuse me. It will be uh, 2,800. So it'll be close, but a couple of hundred away still. Yeah, 2,811. So yeah, about uh, 200 shy. Abe and uh, Takuna Moro, though, beating Kimetsu Kasai and Bakadokomoto. Again, these young lions, the excellent chemistry boost that's really helping them out a lot. Exactly singles-wise, maybe not the best ratings for them, but uh, tag team-wise, we're going to be a decent little team because of it. PS yeah, 70 there, Dragon Sleeper victory uh, for Abe. And then uh, Hiromu and Kirishio beating Sonata and Tai Chi. Um, you know, yeah, I mean, just um, pretty much uh, it was you know 10 point difference between Sonata and Hiromu, and then almost a 10 point difference for Kirishio and Tai Chi. So really a 2 point difference at the end of the day. But Kirishio with a hydrid. A hybrid bomb, that's a hydrid bomb, but a hybrid bomb for Kirishio getting away, and yes, Nada doing a lot of the heavy lifting in that one. And uh, then Jarvis and Alexander beating Parker and Brody King, which, yeah, the excellent chemistry, they were the better team, but Alexander with the Pearl River Plunge of Archie Parker, which, 
He gets a 60. So, yeah, not a great performance for United Empire, but a shocking defeat probably there for House of Torture. That's not looking too hot for him. They've been racking up losses, I'm sure, and Jarvis uh, almost got injured, though, by Birdie King, so glad that didn't happen. The trio's match between uh, Peace, Love, and War and suzuki Goon. It's Claudio Ishino and Takanori Ito uh, go a draw, as it says referee lost control and stopped the match. I would have probably had to be a DQ finish with the Juice hitting Claudio with a chair. Probably how that would have gone. Uh, intentional DQ. Wanting to do some damage going into their title match. Then an 80 for uh, the co-main House of Torture, United Empire, as uh, Moriarty with the Tiger Driver 18. Over Sujora, which, um, yeah, is a 49. Not great. Tour Sujora. Bit of a swing and a miss as far as from the save goes. I have both high hopes for him and Takeda, and it's never panned out. Tough break. Tough, tough break. But yeah, I mean, uh, Jay White did well. Yeah, well, not so much. Moriarty, though, 72. He's definitely been one of the bright spots of uh, the save as far as one of the guys that started with us and built his way through. And then the 8 man's an 82. There's the, Argen there's the Argentine backbreaker from Kato Crusher. Using the win in 1946, hell of a win for Kato Crusher. 67, yeah, I mean, he uh, outperformed Garcia barely, though. Uh, O'Reilly, worst guy in the match. You could say shocking, but he is up there in age, and he's probably declining physically. If I had to take a shot in the dark, take a look. Yeah. Yeah, again, de declining, finally declining physically. Take him, again, Nakajima isn't crazy. Crazy, but what a show, actually. That uh, went a lot better than anticipated. Didn't think that match would do as well as it did. Figured that match would be, you know, that did as I assumed. Didn't expect this to be a 70 either. That, that actually was a pretty good show. How about that? How about that? So day four on the horizon, and then uh, day five is the Warfare matchup show. So, of course, that's going to be the entire show. And then day six will be the final tour show. And before you know it, we're there at the final shows of the Wrestling Nutaku Tour. So, yeah, just a little bit of time left. A little over the halfway point of the tour now. It's on to the next day. Here we go. Alrighty, day four is, of course, backstage instance, like we always do in the save. And it's mostly just this, as far as uh, with uh, mentors and protégés. It's Satoshi Koji, Pascal Microphone Work 2, Hiyara Tamora. Then Tomoriichi, Pascal Microphone Work 2, Tamaya Tom Ford. Kind of crazy, that was a 75 then. I wonder what the first day was here on the, or, or, you know, as far as, uh, because this would have been, yeah, this would have been the third tour, technically, of our save. Kind of crazy. How, you know, Cabana, obviously, gone. Rocky, gone. Yano, gone. Kaiju the Mato, though, still here. Tamora and Tomaki Hanma. SB Kento, before SB Kento. Yeah, Chaos. Mikey Nichols, Ishii Goto, all those guys. Two guys retired. Kind of crazy Ishii retired like he did with his injury. And obviously Juice and Golden Ace when Juice, <laughs> free crazy Juice. Bullet Club, that, when, when that was a thing in the save. Dark Order though, still going strong here. Uh, no one's even left Dark Order really. Uh, actually, yeah, no one. Uh, well, Alex Reynolds is, you know, his contract ran up, but he didn't like turn on or anything. Kind of wild. There's a, I mean, good bit of guys are still with us, though. Especially, like, on the top part of the card. It's always nice to see you. We never really look back. Sometimes it's nice to do that. But yeah, we changed it from Monday to Tuesday, though. I did see that. Uh, but, yeah, as far as our main event for this night, uh, we have a multi-man match. It's an eight-man between um, Task Force Death and the... What is not the Kingdom of Strong Style, but the kind of half and half here. Half Kingdom of Strong Style, half Lion Mark team. It's uh, Fujinami, Hashimoto, and uh, Yu, uh, Yua Yuimura, which is going to come against Task Force Death, which they will get the win, as Nakamura is going to beat Kingston. 21 minutes. And then we'll also have uh, Los Angeles, they have Pawn of Shingo and Bushi taking on Daniel Makabe and Chugula. Makabe is going to beat Bushi there, so what a win for United Empire. Uh, then we're also going to have uh, kind of splitting the tag matches into two different tag matches. That, so that's kind of been a unique perspective on that. And United Empire with another victory here. As Moriarty's going to beat SB Kento. Um, you know, I think we're going to change it. I think we're going to change this one. I think we're going to go 50-50 on this one. Uh, Shingo 
beating Gulak. Yeah. And this one's probably going to be better, too, so I think we're going to swap that. Eh. But I, I like this card, though. Uh, then we'll have um, the Lucha Brothers New Wave of Strong Style, which uh, is a great opportunity for the New Wave of Strong Style to take on a team like the Lucha Brothers, you know, a team that's won the Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championship, has won the tag, you know, the heavyweight tag team titles, uh, has won the Super Junior Tag League, and I think they've also won the Heavyweight Tag League, if I am uh, remembering correctly here, yes. So, uh, well, a well-established team, and one of the best teams we've had pretty much the whole time in the safe. Uh, but uh, Chad Gable, Dominic Greeny, House of Black, steal the show matchup here, as uh, Hannah Jr. Fujita will be beating Dominic Greeny. That's uh, a huge win for House of Black. I don't think a lot of people probably expected that one. And then uh, the opening contest, which again, using the uh, Lionesses here, as Akimi Nishimura Midori Nomura taking on Dona Del Mundo of Sakiaki and Atsui Sumiri, as far as Sakiaki will be getting the victory there. So yeah, now we'll just pick our venue, which uh, I think we'll run Kyushu for this one. Well. We will probably actually run Kyushu for Wrestling Jutaku. And we'll probably run the Pepe Dome. Probably be what we'll do. Probably not that. Yeah, then we'll have Kansai. So we could run that, but... Eh. Yeah, it's not like a 5,000 seater. It's kind of the thing. Although there is, I'm an idiot, the Baycom Gymnasium Dooley. Yeah, we'll run that. Alright. Uh, well, I was thinking about running that for... Well, probably run Kanto for, um... The, uh, the Warfare match. Uh, yeah. There we go, alright. We're gonna go. So, 57 for the opener. As, uh, yeah, I mean, Midori, she's getting better already. Just seems like she's, uh, improving a lot. The Lamont Galaxy for Sakiyaki. Yeah, her and uh, Natsui. They have the excellent chemistry, so that works out well. And Good stuff. Good stuff for the Dona Del Mondo team in a 79 year for the Lucha Brothers versus the new wave of strong styles. Ray Fenix beating Yuta Nakashima after the Faction Pop Driver and the Foot Stomp combination there. So yeah, Lucha Brothers getting the win. And yeah, just a tough, tough break for Oiwa and Nakashima. But they're going to get better at working with great talent. The 77 for Gable and Garini against uh, Hiara Jr. for Jita and Dante Martin. Hell of a match. They were the better team. So I'm glad they got the win as uh, Hiara Jr. for Jita with the kid over Dominic Garini. So I got a 77. 79. For Los Singo Brown versus Daniel Makabe and Drew Gulak as Shingo with the main Japan over Drew Gulak. At least uh, he outperformed Gulak, but Makabe again, best guy in the match. Really, no surprise there with how he's been performing in the 82 for the next matchup. Sombra in Kit SB Kendo losing to Jonathan Gresham and Lee Moriarty. Yeah, I guess we could have flipped it because I guess we could have these guys beat, you know, and, and Sombra and, and Kendo beat Moriarty and Gresham. But I just felt like this was the better outcome. I'm surprised Gresham didn't do as do better than he did, but still, I mean, they I guess they were. Yeah, I guess they still were the better team, so. But the joint custody getting the win for Moriarty over SB Kendo in 20 minutes and an 80 for an 8 man main event. Again, you know, kind of crazy how uh, Kingston and Yui Moore are doing the same. Uh, both different ends of the spectrum on that one. Yui Moore should be in the prime of his career, and he's not really performing as well as I hoped. And Eddie Kingston, obviously, on the tail end of his uh, active injuring career. Fujinami, though, weirdly, uh, not even in the 60s anymore. Nakamura, just slowly going down the card as well with some of these ratings. But uh, as I say that, he's in the main event for the first night. But yeah, I mean, Pac doing the heavy lifting of this one. Crazy, Hashimoto outperformed Moxley because he was off his game. What a weird performance uh, from some of those guys. But yeah, at least it got an 80. And now, uh, for the Warfare Night, we're not going to see the booking of it. We're just going to run it like a kind of like we do for these final shows now. So, we'll be uh, there shortly for this Warfare matchup. And then, on to the next night for the final tour show after that. And again, we'll be... At Wrestling Dutaku's uh, Night 1 and 2 before we know it. Alrighty, so the third ever New Japan Warfare matchup starts with Eddie Kingston versus Ren Narita, which Narita gets the victory. And uh, with the Narita special number 1, Eddie Kingston with a 45. <laughs> really no surprise with how well, uh, as far as how well, how uh, shit he has been. 
but he was really off his game, though, so I guess I have to give him the benefit of the doubt there. But yeah, 45, not going to cut it. Not going to cut it. But the next matchup is Pentagon Jr. versus Renarita, which he will win with the arm bar in 12 19. Quickly evens it up with one elimination apiece. And Gaju D'Amato gets hurt here after the Fear Factor. Tough break as Pentagon Jr. gets the win here in 18 minutes. So now 2 1 with the advantage to Task Force Death. But then comes Kushida to make it 2 2 with he uh, getting the submission victory with Kushida lock in 17 42. They're all tied up, and in comes Shoto Yumino, and he gets him with the Death Rider. So he beats Kushida here, he's the better man, so the right guy wins. And now it's 3-2. Shoto Yumino makes it as far as that wild 4-2 now. Uh, with him beating Yua, Yui Mora. Poor Yui Mora. Didn't really have a chance there against Shoto Yumino. But the fifth and final participant, Alex Shelley, least gets the win here, so it's 5-4. If Shelly can get a win here, he makes it 5-5. Next man up. And they did have great chemistry. That's a good little uh, matchup there. But the next man up is Ray Phoenix, and he stops it here with the Meteora. So, for the first time, we don't get the fifth participant. I felt like this was a nice change of pace uh, to, you know, at least make it all the way close to the end, but make it to where it's 4-5 the final score instead of it being, you know, as far as it coming down the last match, which that is more, um, as far as that's probably for the best, as far as that's the best way of going about this matchup, but it's nice to change it up every now and again, uh, so the, you know, New Japan Warfare matchup, the third one ever, at least the main event delivered, uh, there in the middle, it was kind of cooking with Pentagon Jr., but, uh, showed to UNO kind of came in and Kind of brought it back down to what where it was at, in the beginning, but uh, yeah, I mean uh, uh, the main event delivered. That's kind of all that we needed from this night. Sucks that um, there's an injury with Kaiju D'Amato, but we'll see how he does as far as uh, in the future. It didn't look like it was going to be a serious injury, but we'll see. Now on to the final tour show, we go. All right, it's for the final tour show rather as far as uh, backstage incidents. Got a lot of them again as from. Uh, Mio Nakanawa, right in the backstage era, area by simply being so cheerful and fun to be around. And then Eugene the Guy passing on psychology tips to the Great Okan. Chono passing on psycho psychology tips to Kuma and Maya. And then uh, same thing here, but Chono passing it on to Shonen Shozaki. So, uh, with our final tour show here, we have a, a bit of a major main event here as far as... Uh, you know, we got the Designs of Perfection with the newest member, Baroni Yamamura, as um, uh, as far as this was Takahiro y uh, Yamamura. But uh, obviously, you know, with the Designs of Perfection gimmick, you need a designer name, and with Baroni, as far as, uh, so we have, uh, I believe, Bar I mean, yeah, it's Italian, duh, uh, but um, I, I want to say we have... Uh, but we have some England, as far as like UK, London, the kind of native designer brands. I love how everyone does, but Sonata. Sonata, though, uh, he's uh, <laughs> he, he's in his own. Well, I guess True London and uh, Paris de Silva, they didn't change their names. But yeah, obviously, Paris and London, which is kind of funny um, that it that's just the only connection. But um, nonetheless, so <laughs> as far as uh, enough about Designers Perfection, they get the win now. As because uh, they're taking on uh, the bomb squad of T uh, Haramu Takashi and Kawada, but also the Divine Angels of uh, Garza and Archangel the Venom. As uh, they'll be getting the win here with Baroni beating Kawada. We'll see how he does. Uh, we're also uh, seeing in the co main. It's tough to really pick. This new wave of strong style Task Force Death is another eight man tag. I don't think it's going to be the co main, but um, Atsuchi Aoaki, though, will be getting the win for the new wave here. So that's a huge win going into their trios match with Yumino. is going to be a little upset by that. We also have Moxley and Kingston versus the Kingdom of Strong Style of Shinsuke Nakamura and Yui Mora. Which uh, Nakamura will be getting the win over Eddie Kingston there. House of Torture versus uh, Shotoro, Shotoro Shino and uh, Rex Steiner. As Brody King will be beating Rex Steiner. So they finally get a win here. Does uh, House of Torture beating... Uh, a tag team of Sheena and Rex Steiner. 
Also, we'll have another United Empire. A matchup versus House of Torture. This is the technical masterclass matchup as Lee Moriarty will be beating Drew Parker. So, tough break for the JY Drew Parker team. Losing to the United Empire team. And then the Young Lion matchup of Sunei Takedome and Ichiharu Machizuki taking on Jason Lee and Koto Ibushi as Ibushi. And Jason Lee would be picking up the win with uh, Ibushi beating Machizuki. So, that is our final tour shell. So two um, major eight man tags, a couple of tag team matches throughout the tour show and uh but as i think yeah i think hokuto's probably our best bet because i don't think we're gonna run uh the sapporo dome uh for wrestling judaku so yeah i think i think we'll run this 5000 seater and call it all righty oh well backed out to the main men <laughs> menu that would have been tough 61 for the opening contest jason lee and koto bushi getting the win Sunei Takedome, almost on the same level as Jason Lee and Kota Ibushi. The kid is ready. He, he is ready for sure as uh, United Empire. Beating Jay White and Drew Parker. As, uh, that, that's a tough break for the Jay White and Drew Parker team. They still get outperformed, but it's kind of crazy that Volter is the worst of the two out of him and Lee Moriarty. So shout out Moriarty, man. He's come a long way. A long, long way. 18 minute matchup. We're already with the win with the joint custody. And it's House of Torture beating the Ashina Rex Steiner team. They finally get a win this tour. It's Brody King pinning Rex Steiner with the Gonzo Bomb in 10 14. The crowd buzzing too. So nice stuff there. 77 for the. Or 77 for the 81 here for uh, John Moxley and Eddie Kingston versus Shinsuke Nakamura and Yui Mora. Nakamura pinning Eddie Kingston with the Bumaye. As uh, Moxley with 81, 75 for Nakamura. Should be a great main event for the first night. Yui Mora at least outperformed Eddie Kingston, but that is uh, not saying much. A fucking young lion outperformed Eddie Kingston. <laughs> Brutal. As our uh, co-main event, 8-man tag, the first of the two 8-man tags. Task Force Death losing the new wave of strong style. So he has uh, Nobuhiro Shimatani still dealing with his uh, chronic upper back pain. Which is definitely affecting him in a big, big way with a 45. Not a great performance there, but uh, everybody else did pretty well. Oh, he was almost in the 60s. So he's definitely the better of the two. Uh, but yeah, Pac, Ray Phoenix, Pentagon Jr. definitely doing the heavy lifting of that matchup. As uh, Itsuki Aragi getting the submission victory. Then our main event. Oof, a 74. Angel Garza with a 55. That's tough. Get out performed by Kawato. Archangel Chultavena, though, with a 66. So he did well uh, on the bright side. Uh, Baroni Yamamura, though, did pretty well for a debut in 68. As uh, he gets the submission victory over Kawado. And uh, what a victory. Uh, what a victory for sure. Uh, definitely helps out the designers of perfection. They needed somebody to kind of fill that role of uh, kind of the next kind of guy up, potentially. Is that, I think Tomoya Tom Ford. Don't think it's going to happen. I uh, don't think Burberry Baba. I don't think it's going to happen. But Baroni looks like he's going to kind of fill the slot which tai Chi, tai Chi should have as far as kind of like the second in command to uh, help out Sonata out. And I think it's going to be great for him. And yeah, I mean, Hiromu Sonata, of course, main event for night two. We'll be seeing that very, very shortly. But, uh, the first night, of course, will be next. And the shit, I mean, man, Moxley and, and Nakamura, that's going to be a fun match. We'll see how the uh, tag team title matchup does, too. I think that's going to be a... Maybe the best match on the card. We'll have to uh, wait and see. Alrighty, so the first night starts off with a 75. Uh, pretty impressive, actually. It's Kota Ibushi. will get the win over Suneo Takedome. It's Ibushi with the last right style Tiger Driver. But it's a good performance from Ibushi here. I'm kind of shocked, to be honest. He's even in the 80s after his uh, pretty abysmal never avoid title match with Kazuchika Okada. So this is a great bounce back for him. Good match, yeah, as far as from a sold-out Pepe Dome. Not bad at all. It's a 50, or a 64, rather, but it's a 54. 64 for the next matchup between Shoto, uh, Shota Yumino and Eddie Kingston against Yuya Yuimura as uh, Shota Yumino. Best guy of the match. And he gets the win as far as getting the win with the Hinkai Death Rider as uh, Narita and Yuimura, both uh, 58. Yumino with a 64. We probably could have had Kingston lose here to help elevate uh, Yui Moore and Narita. But uh, Kingston was and uh, Shota Yumino were both really off their game. So 
Could have been even better for him, but fortunately, they didn't bring it. As an 82 for Diamond King versus Dragon's Den. Diamond K getting the victory here as Konosuke Dikeshita with the submission victory over Roderick Strong. The wall of Dikeshita again, a great performance from Diamond K. Pretty great performance actually from uh, Dragon's Den as well. Pretty pleased, pretty pleased by that. 85 for the tag match between Suzuki Goon and the Juice, Juice Rums Alex Coughlin team. As uh, Claudio and, and Ashino both off their games as well. Uh, but Shatoru Ashino, uh, off his game performance in a 91 is kind of crazy. But uh, Coughlin gets the uh, loss here. As far as he loses to Claudio Castagnoli's no uh, neutralizer. And uh, that's a nice little wave of momentum for Claudio to go into the next night here. Now 95 for the Never Openweight 6 Man Tag Team title matchup. And we do in fact have new champs. Death Triangle for the second time in this save. Are the Never Point Six Man champs, and boy oh boy, are they just riding a great, great wave here of uh, in-ring performances. A 94, 96 from Ray Phoenix and Pac, 86 from Pentagon Jr. Hell of a trio, hell of a trio, and hell of a match. So 89 for the Junior Boy Title matchup here as Jazz Gable makes his fourth defense. He gets it with the Grand Amplitude over Dante Martin. 24 minutes. Hell of a junior matchup, though. The uh, Styles Clash affair went pretty well. The 94 for the tag team title matchup here as Gresham and Makabe retain their titles for the first time. And uh, only time, you know, because obviously that first reign, I don't think they were able to get a successful defense. Pretty sure when they won the belts, they immediately had to defend them against Falter and um, Zack Sabre Jr. So, big achievement for them. But Sombra, best guy in the match. Uh, Shingo the worst, and he takes a loss here. The arm trap German suplex from Daniel Makabe, which will be our main event. Will be next, of course, and Moxley gets the win with the Death Rider. And it's his second defense of the New Japan Strong Openweight title over Shinsuke Nakamura. Yeah, Nakamura is pretty much done as a um, main event talent. You know, 76 is not going to cut it. But a great performance of Moxley nonetheless. And uh, the post-show press comments, wow, does really well. And 85, so we see a Death Triangle join with Moxley here, the uh, the new champs and the retaining champion of Task Force Death. For Pac, Ray Phoenix, and Pentagon Jr., it's about, you know, as far as they uh, feel like they've been the best trio in a long time in New Japan, and they get to prove it with these belts. In the first reign, they didn't get to hold the belts as long as they would have hoped, but now they feel like they are in perfect position to hold these belts for a long time, and they feel like they can prove again and again and again that they are the best trio in New Japan. As for John Moxley, brings up the fact that you know he's beaten Hayato Tamora, a man who has won the New Japan Cup and was a heavyweight title contender, says that uh, sure he could still be New Japan Strong Openweight Champion, but issues out a challenge to Sonata and to Hiromu, whoever wins on on the next night. Dominion, champion versus champion main event to see who is the best of the best. We'll see if they answer it. I'll, I'll come uh, night two as the next press conference is from Diamond K. As for Kenta and Katsuki Nakajima, they are excited about uh, bringing home some gold for Diamond K. They want to beat Tamar and O'Reilly. As for uh, you know, Nakajima, of course, he is uh, you know, enjoying the rest that he's had, and as far as winning that Intercontinental title, as far as with him and, and Dominion, he's not sure yet, as far as he hasn't gotten word from Tanahashi yet, maybe somebody, you know, will we'll get something to happen on wrestling, uh, do talk night too, maybe we'll see something by the time the Best of the Juniors takes place, but he is focused on helping Kenten Katsuki Nakajima as far as training them, preparing them, you know, he's been in the ring with Tamora a couple of times, obviously, he was in the New Japan Cup Finals, was, uh, of course, the Wrestle Kingdom main event last year. Uh, he has been in the ring with Tamara on the biggest stages, and he, he's looking to give them all the help they can get and all the tips of, of the trade as well. So that is the first night in the books of 90. Uh, so I thought it'd be a little bit better. Kind of crazy again. The, the six-man tag team titles are the best thing on the show. Figured this would be the best thing on the card, but that actually wasn't. Um, so that's shocking. Happy all the title matches, though, have been great. So that's a good sign. Shout out, I mean, again, that post-show press conference is doing well. Really shocking. Surprised this even got an 85. So 
some good stuff though uh, along the way. Definitely want to put over Moxley. Uh, definitely want to put over Park. And I'm trying to think who else. Maybe Makabe, maybe Gresham. Actually, uh, Chaz Gable. Him and Dante Martin, they, they had a good, good little match. Well, keep them, actually. Uh, we're just going to praise them. There we go. Oh, guys, you're in love there on uh, the end out night one. And it's on to night two. Here we go. Alrighty, night two starts off with Zack Sabre Jr. vs. Suneyu Takidome as far as we're at the uh, Q&A Stadium in Miyagi. Almost 50,000 people, though, as far as, obviously, it's a sellout, but, uh, as far as this, uh, Zack Sabre Jr. and Suneyu Takidome match, I probably could have gave it a little bit more time, probably could have gave it a full 20, but, uh, man, Suneyu Takidome, again, he just keeps on improving with a 60, and, uh, of course, he's got one more Trial Series matchup. I'm not sure if we're going to save it for the best Super Juniors or for Dominion. Not really sure yet, but it's going to be one or the other. Anywho, Zack Sabre Jr. does beat him with the Zack Driver in 18 minutes. But man, he's, uh, Suneo Taki Dome. Boy, he, uh, he, he's the next man up. That is for sure. It's an 82 for Suzuki Goon and Peace, Love, and War. As, uh, as far as, uh, Coughlin, Connors, and Kavanera versus, uh, Shatori Ashino, Takanori Ito, Fred Yehai. Ashino, best guy in the match, and he gets the win over Clark Connors at the ankle hold, so the best guy beats the worst guy, so can't go wrong with that, and, uh, yeah, good little undercard trios matchup at 80 for the Blast Off House of Black 8-man tag. It's Tyler Black pinning Takuya Nomura with the curb stomp at 12-13, kind of crazy that it's just a Steal the Show matchup, but, again, we had to do something for a Steal the Show matchup, is either going to be the previous match or this, and, uh, yeah, I mean, Tyler Black, best guy in the match, pretty much by far. I mean, the Bushi Bill is 78, it's not too bad, but yeah, um, Strickland and Rob Eagle, 74, 73, Abby with 71. Not too bad, not, not too bad, to be honest. I'm pretty pleased with everybody's performance there. 87 for Jay White and Miro versus Moriarty and Volter, and some miscommunication here leads to Volter getting a Burning Lariat win over... Miro and uh, Jay White, tough break there. So the uh, losing ways continue for House of Torture. Not looking too hot for them, but what a performance from Volter and Lee Moriarty, though. Great little team. There's an 87, a great performance from that team. 81 for the Junior FOA Tag Team title matchup as, an, as a, um, as, a uh, as far as getting the victory there for the Velocities. 21-57. As I forgot to add a... Um, as far as a post-show press conference, and so let's uh, go and do that before I want to go through the at least the performance ratings. Yeah, Paris State Civil, Jude Lending getting the win. Yeah, I mean, Archangel Deveno, Angel Garza, they're not ready yet for a junior boy tag team title run, but maybe potentially if they put in the time and effort in, as I forgot to do as far as post-show press conference. With the velocities, as far as... Oh, we'll go with um, Designs of Perfection. So we'll have Sonata with Paris de Silva, Jude London. As far as that goes. And then Makabe and Grisham. Perfect. Uh, yeah, we'll put it there in the middle. All right, so uh, back to the action here. It's 89 for our new Japan Strong Open Way Tag Team title matchup. As we do have new champs, thanks in part to interference from Kanosuke Takeshita interfering and attacking Tamora, leaving uh, as far as O'Reilly down for the, uh, you know, hitting him basically with that own finish that they would do in uh, the vertical spike into, as far as with the, uh, instead of a head kick, it's a Bumai, or not Bumai, it's a fucking Busaiku knee. As Nakajima drops him after the uh, vertical spike. Bume, or I did it again. Fucking combination as uh, Kenta. 89, incredible that he is still performing at such a high level. Tomorrow, though, and O'Reilly, they dropped the belts here. Uh, you know, I think everyone can kind of see where this is going for tomorrow. And uh, as far as, uh, we'll talk about that here shortly. But new, New Japan Strong Up Away Tag Team Champions. The 83 for our co-main boy, Claudio. And uh, maybe his final kind of major title matchup because the 64 will not cut it. 
It's Juice Robinson gets the win, though, with the pulp friction, and that's his second offense. What a run he's had as the U.S. champion so far. He's doing pretty well for himself. And our main event, shockingly, only a 92, as Hiromu beats Sonata with the time bomb. It's his third defense of the IWGP Heavyweight title. Afterwards, with this post-show press conference, he does accept. As far as Moxley, you know, as far as the Death Rider for Hiromu, he even you know, jokingly says that he is, he thought he's, uh, you know, as far as with his attitude and the way he has put on a performance throughout the years now, all could have ended on a, on one faithful night in San Francisco, of course, referring to the Ryu Lee. Uh, as far as the uh, boy, that that dragon driver, that I mean, could have easily not only paralyzed him, could have um, ended everything uh, for him. And he is somebody that is not afraid of death, because he has thought he's had this second chance of a career, and he's thought that he's been able to do everything he can. So if the Death Rider wants to bring a fight, he better be ready to risk it all. So for Hiromu, champion versus champion, he has accepted this challenge. With him and Moxley. So that will be set for Dominion. So we have our main event set with that matchup. Uh, we also see Designers of Perfection with their post show press conference. You know, Sonata, very, you know, as far as he, he kind of reminisces thinking about where it was last year. Never a boy champ. Wanted to be, you know, as far as winning all three belts, being the Intercontinental Champion, the Never a boy Champion, and winning the IWGP Heavyweight title. And now here, here he is a year later. Doesn't have any belts. Came up short tonight. But knows that uh, for him, he knows that he can take everything from New Japan as far as with his star power if he goes and leaves for Hollywood. So you're seeing now a different shift for Sonata and that leaving for Hollywood. Now, now he feels like with all these designer brands, with the fashion runways, that he, uh, the fashion runway shows, the commercials, all that. Now he feels like he can go and do television, do movies. Maybe he'll go to uh, do, uh, you know, as far as J-dramas or even uh, K-dramas as far as for uh, Korea. His vision is grander than maybe what New Japan has. Form. So, he, again, he's teasing this potential move for the Zion's perfection. But for Jude London and Paris State Silva, that is the opposite of what they're feeling. They are almost a year into this reign. They've proven night in and night out that they're the best junior boy tag team in the world. But in come Makabe and Gresham. And for them, they interrupt this press conference for them to say, for Dominion, you know, they were given an opportunity by Volter and Zack Sabre Jr. to prove that they were the best tag team in the world. And they came up short in that regard, but they want to push it forward, right? They want to give another team that type of opportunity. A team that, you know, like themselves, came from the Junior Boy Tag Team title scene. They figured, why not? Champions versus champions. Winner takes all. Paris State Silva, Jude London. They think about it, and they accept. So that is now set as well, but there is some time left. You know, it's not completely set in stone. Maybe something will happen in the Best of the Junior Finals. You know, as far as Jude London and Paris State Silva, maybe they'll in themselves be in the Junior Heavyweight, uh, as far as the Best of the Juniors. Maybe they'll, they'll be involved in the tournament itself. We'll see. We shall see, because, I mean, that is a very tempting offer, but as far as with the Velocities... They're eyeing maybe grander success, maybe single success, maybe even, you know, as far as being involved in that best of the juniors would be great for them. Sonata even kind of tries to take control of the negotiations and, and says that, you know, as far as like they want to be on, you know, Sonata's level, that's what's going to take, winning a best of the juniors, doing things by themselves. So maybe even Sonata is, is maybe pressuring the designers of perfection not to take the match. So this is a, a unique perspective from kind of all parties involved. So that's just kind of how that press conference went. And then for Tamora, a, an irate had a Tamora. For him, you know, Konosuke Takeshita now, he's cost him the New Japan Strong, you know, open weight tag team titles. He hasn't forgotten about losing that IWGP heavyweight title to him, of course, at Wrestle Kingdom. 
says, you know what, I think it's time I return the favor. And that is for Konosuke Takeshita, for him, Tamora, at Dominion for the Intercontinental title. They've had the match for the New Japan Cup, but he beat him there. He's going to beat him here at Dominion for that Intercontinental title. And then, he says, I'm going to go on to win the G1 again. So he wants to go back-to-back -back in the G1. He wants to be heavyweight champion, Intercontinental champion again. So that is Tamora's 2027 plan. And then the last one, Taos Torture. And Jay White and Miro, Jay White is trying to steer the ship. And he just knows it's a lesson. These past months or so haven't been great. Haven't been great for us. We've been getting, you know, you've crossed me matches. I've crossed you matches inadvertently, of course. And you know, Miro says, like, yeah, yeah, inadvertently, of course. And he says, listen. This is not the time to panic. This is not the time to look elsewhere. We are a, you know, we're the house of torture for a reason. We are on a solid foundation. We, you can't drop this house. You can't, you know, destroy this house. The only way it's going to be destroyed is from within. We can't do that. We know what's at stake. You know, you, I got to get back to that higher level. I got to get back to the higher level. And they're eyeing, maybe potentially... That's going to start in the G1. So for Jay White Miro, that's the plan. To steer the ship that way. To go into the positive direction by winning the G1. So you know, Brody King hopefully is going to get involved and win potentially as well for him. And But it's mainly Jay White Miro trying to kind of make sure that each other understand that you know that there's no backstabbing. There's no any of this. But maybe it's... They, it's a false sense of that. It, there's maybe each guy's trying to give each other a false sense of that, of security, a false sense of security in that regard. So there's a, a little bit of, um, I'd say maybe a little 3D chess with that, or 4D chess, if you will. That probably make more sense to say. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's just kind of where we're at with Jay White Miro. So it's not the typical like all oh, there's infighting, they're costing each other matches. Are they gonna come to blows? It's the opposite of that. It's they're trying to keep it together. And they feel like they're going crazy by uh, with all the bad luck that's happening, all the bad things that have gone on for them. So that's just kind of a fun little twist of what we're doing. So another 90 here. Very, very surprised the first night was better than this night. I thought this was going to be the much better night. Uh, but the tag team title matchup was really, really good for the first night. Just again, figure that main event would do a lot better. Just kind of shocked by that, to be honest. But yeah, I mean... There's some good performances throughout this night, though. I mean, uh, Kenta Nakajima did well. Juice did, did well. Of course, Aromu did well. Just kind of shocked by Sonata's rating. Thought that was kind of telling. Velocity did well, though. You know, Drew London and Paris de Silva. Uh, the, the tag team match with uh, United Empire and Jay White and Miro. That shockingly did well as, as well. And just, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, um, it's wild. It's been wild to see. I'm trying to think here, as far as United Empire, no, don't think so. Well, I mean, they did do, do well, I, I do have to say that, so yeah, we'll, we'll go Walter, and then, um, well, we'll go Kenta. I feel like that's fair, one guy from each match. Well, that will do it for this episode, thank you all for watching, and of course, next week we'll be in the best Super Juniors, 18 days, 9... Days for each block, two blocks, of course, of 20 participants. Battling it out to see who will be the best of the Super Juniors in the year 2027. Of course, the winner will take on the Junior Boy Champion and Chaz Gable, but it's kind of hard to believe. Just a year ago, Chaz Gable basically made his debut in that tournament. To think now he's going in as the champion, shows you what type of year he has had, and uh, we'll see if he can go away successfully as the champion. I mean, hard to believe. You know, last year, during the, uh, oh, went to the junior, wait, not the best of juniors. There we go. Uh, you know, Hashimoto and Airbender was the finals. Well, Hashimoto go back to back. You know, that has been so far to date, and we have had some great final participants. You know, Ray Phoenix and Makabe, Pac and Ryu Lee. Some great matches uh, on the horizon, but there has not been one quite like that Hashimoto Airbender matchup. It's kind of crazy to think that's been the best one. You know, will he join? Kind of this list of guys that have won it twice, you know, as far as, uh, hard to believe there hasn't been a guy that hasn't, hasn't, uh, as far as, so far since we started back in 2020, 
has not been a participant to be a multiple time winner. Maybe that will change here? Who knows? We shall see as we'll catch you guys then. Take care, everyone.